It's crossover Thursday here on Locked On Vols. We go behind enemy lines, check in with Locked On Gamecocks, learn all about South Carolina here on a Thursday Locked On Vols. You are Locked On Vols, your daily podcast on the Tennessee Volunteers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? Welcome into it. Thursday edition of Locked On Balls. I'm Eric Kane, your host. As always, you can find me at underscore Kaner and at Locked On Balls. If you're watching, hit that like button. Please subscribe. If you're listening, you're not subscribed, subscribe wherever you find your podcasts. Every single weekday morning when you wake up, it's Locked On Balls, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network. As promised, it is crossover season. Well, it's really, it's football season, so it's crossover time of the week, and we're going to check in uh, with our guy, Andrew Lyon, over at Locked On Gamecocks. Get a little preview of this Tennessee and South Carolina matchup. What's up, man? How's it going, Eric? Hope you've been doing well. Yeah, doing really well and uh, enjoying this football season, of course. Uh, obviously, for Tennessee, it's been a pretty good football season. Uh, for South Carolina, year number two of Shane Beamer, um, started the season, I believe, what five and two. Uh, what's what's kind of the mood in Columbia right now? Year number two with uh, with Shane Beamer, Eric. The the mood, quite honestly, is not that great right now over in Columbia. The Gamecocks, of course, are coming off of a thirty eight to six drubbing that they suffered at the hands of the Florida Gators on Saturday, and it sort of leads into, in my opinion, the biggest storyline for the Gamecocks heading into this matchup, which is. What are we going to see from this South Carolina football team? Because obviously they've had some really big highs this year. They have ended a couple of really bad losing skids. You know, one against Kentucky in terms of playing them on the road. They got their first win in Kroger Field since 2012. And of course, they were, I believe, 0-8 against the Texas A&M Aggies until they finally knocked the Aggies off earlier this year. And that was all part of a four-game win streak. And then the Missouri game happened. Missouri came in and pretty much just owned the game after the first couple of drives for both teams and ended up winning the game 23 to 10. And it quite honestly didn't even really feel like Eric, it was that close. And so South Carolina fans at this point, they just don't know what they're going to get with this football team. You know, if you see the South, the South Carolina that played against Arkansas and Georgia, then what's going to happen is Tennessee's going to jump out to an early lead. They might go up 21, nothing or 28, nothing like they did this past year. And South Carolina will not have any semblance of a rhythm on either side of the ball. If they see the South Carolina that played against Texas A&M and Vanderbilt, then you'll see the defense step them and get some turnovers. You will see Beamer ball 2.0 in effect with some big time special team plays. And so with this contest at this point, the fans are just looking for the Gamecocks to, you know, stay in this game from the onset. Do not have this game become really uncompetitive to where you're having to fight essentially a 90 degree uphill climb after the first quarter. So, South Carolina, yeah, again, it's been a lot of highs and a lot of lows, and it is going to make for a very interesting offseason. But, of course, Tennessee Volunteers, they have certainly had one of the best seasons in their recent program history this year and are in contention for the college ball playoffs. So what's the mood over in Knoxville? It's good, man. I mean, it's it's hard uh, it's hard not to be happy and excited and and fired up. And, of course, you lost that game at Georgia, and Georgia's the best team in the in, in the country. and. He didn't play well, offense didn't play well and everything. But now outside of that one Saturday, I mean, this has been a really, really good season. Tennessee's offense has obviously exploded. Number one in the country in total offense, number one in the country in scoring offense, number one in the country in passing efficiency. You have a, a Heisman Trophy um, candidate in Hendon Hooker. Uh, he was the front runner for a little point in time. He's probably sitting number, he's sitting at number two in terms of the odds per bet online. So, you know, things are going well. It's been a whole lot of fun. And um, it's been unexpected. I, I think everybody, myself included, were expecting Tennessee to take a step in year number two. I would have never said a, a potential 11 win season the regular season. I mean, I would have never said that. So um, it's been unexpected, but it's been really, really good. And Tennessee's still in an amazing position sitting at number five to jump back into the college football playoffs at the at the season's end. So um, that it, it's it's been really good for Tennessee. So you kind of went over the biggest storylines for South Carolina. You know, for Tennessee, I think it is you got to try to make sure you focus on this game at hand. And, you know, the coaching staff is obviously going to do that. The leadership in this locker room has done just an amazing job of saying next game is the most important game, only control what you can control and all that. 
So I'm not too worried about this, but Tennessee in general, the focus is going to be not in Columbia this weekend. It's going to be, you know, what is TCU doing, you know, against Baylor? What is USC doing? And it's a couple of right matchups in the season. You know, what, what are some of these other teams doing around the country that could affect Tennessee in its position in the college football playoff? Of course, you know, Tennessee's got to go in there and handle business. You can't just show up and win a football game. You got to play. And uh, despite it being a 22 point favorite per bet online, I just think the focus a lot of the time is the storyline this week is what is going on elsewhere because you're ending the season with Missouri, South Carolina, and Vanderbilt. And those are three games that you should win. Now, in terms of South Carolina, obviously the the, the rushing defense was not great last week against Florida. I think for Tennessee, you want to – I'm not expecting close to 400 yards on the ground. I just – I think that was an anomaly. Uh, but you want to run the football really well. You want to get back and have Jabari Small and Jalen Wright both go. You want to see Dylan Sampson, a true freshman that came on and played really well against Missouri to kind of duplicate results, get about 10 or so carries, and, and look good doing it. So what's that run game look like against a South Carolina team that is a little, little struggling right now in that regard? Also, you got to limit the big plays. I mean, I, I know on paper, offensively, South Carolina doesn't you know jump off the page. However, and Josh Heupel mentioned this earlier this week, it's like second the SEC a pass plays 45 yards down the field or something, you know, behind Tennessee. They've they've got some chunk plays at points in times this season. So you limit those big plays, keep everything in front of you, and then kind of rally and, 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 and go to the football. Those are some of the big storylines, at least on the Tennessee side, entering this matchup. Right. Well, you know, again, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of the focus with South Carolina and the storylines here right now is sort of on the program itself. And, you know, I don't want to make it out like, of course, that South Carolina is not going to try to win this football game. There's going to be a lot of emotion in this contest. You know, this is going to be the final home game for a really special group of seniors here at South Carolina for guys like Zach Pickens on defense. And then you look at maybe some other guys on the team as well. You know, they were part of some really bad years under Will Muschamp. And of course, it led and culminated to the point where Will Muschamp was fired back in 2020. And it led to Shane Beamer getting subsequently hired here. And so obviously, this senior group, they have to feel good about the fact that, you know, the program is at least in a more stable position than it was, say, two, three years ago. You know, the trajectory still can be trending on the up and up. And so I think that when you look at this game for South Carolina, I think that you're going to rely on those seniors to come out there and lead the charge. Zach Pickens, I mentioned on defense, you've also got a senior wideout in Josh Van, who had a really good year last year. This year has not been quite the year that he maybe wanted because, of course, the depth is a lot better at that position. And he maybe hasn't been as big of a part of the rotation, which has been a really uh, big sticking point with South Carolina's fan base and the offensive coaching staff. But you're going to look at those guys and you're going to say, you know, hey, how are you going to keep all of the rest of the team mentally in check for a big game like this? Because the other thing is this, you know, not that they're going to actually look past Tennessee, and I'm not trying to insinuate that, but of course, there's the Clemson game as well. The Clemson game in terms of a robbery, in terms of the emotionally charged, you know, matchup there, it's going to be a bigger deal for South Carolina compared to, again, this game against Tennessee. Again, that's not to say they're going to look past Tennessee, but, you know, you could see how maybe some players on the team might say, look, we're not going to be able to contend with this offense. We just need to look ahead. You know, let's just shoot for the head of the snake that's up in the upstate with the Clemson Tigers. And South Carolina doesn't need to do that. So look for the senior leadership to try to step up both on the sideline and on the field this Saturday night, especially if South Carolina wants to keep this one competitive. It's a rivalry game as well. So, I mean, that's, you know, that's expected. I, I, I get that. And, man, what – uh, for, for for a guy that has to cover a team that plays Alabama every single year, I get it. I mean, that's just that's tough sledding every single year in this era of college football. South Carolina's got to play Clemson every year. Tennessee's got to play Alabama every year. It's been tough. Um, all right. So storylines in the bag. I see uh, Steve Spurrier, the old ball coach, sitting right behind your left shoulder. Well, he he loves Tennessee fans for sure. Well, more so, he loves to make fun of Tennessee fans. It's funny. Steve Spurrier and Josh, or excuse me, Shane Beamer, and Josh Heupel. We're both named the Steve Spurrier first year FBS head coach award, whatever it was last year. So there's some uh, there's some similarities there. I think both coaches are obviously off to a, a pretty decent start at their new stop. So key matchups in this football game, Tennessee and South Carolina. That is coming up next right here on this crossover edition of Locked on Balls and Locked on Gamecocks. This episode is brought to you in part by Nugenix. Remember when winning felt easy? That's because when you were younger, you were at the part, you were the peak of your age and your testosterone production. 
what some have called the winner's hormone or the man hormone, wouldn't it be nice to get that winning edge once again and that old swagger back in your step? Want more energy to counter the negative physical effects of aging? Nugenics Total T Testosterone Booster uh, with Testofen will help you turn back the clock, re-energize your workouts, get you better results at the gym, and help you feel like a ma the man that you really want to be. All right, while well, every single product professes quality, many other products using uh, generic ingredients that are often far less than the clinical grade. With Genetics Total T, you get the same clinical uh, potency levels used in the trials. And Nugenics form uh, formula is backed by 10 years of science and research as well. Nugenics Total T is the number one selling testosterone booster at GNC. Nugenics Total T can help re-energize your life and get you back to the powerful, confident, good-looking warrior that you used to be. Get a complimentary bottle of Nugenics Total or uh, Nugenics Total Team when you text college to 231231. Text now and get a bottle of Nugenics Thermo, their most powerful fat incinerator ever, with key ingredients to help you get back into shape fast, and it's absolutely free. Text college to 231231. Text college to 231231. Texting enrolls you into a recurring automated text message. Uh, consent not required to purchase. Message and data rates may apply. Welcome back to today's special crossover edition between the Locked On Gamecocks and the Locked On Vols podcast, where we cover your respective team every single day. I am Andrew Line, the Locked On Gamecocks podcast, here with Eric Kane over at Locked On Vols to talk about the upcoming matchup between the Gamecocks and the Volunteers that's taking place on Saturday night. We've dove into all of the biggest storylines with this game. So now, what are some of the key matchups that you, the fans, might need to pay attention to? For South Carolina, I'm going to start off real quick with the first key matchup, which is, in my eyes, South Carolina's defensive backs against Tennessee's tempo that they run on this offense. In this case, there are both some good things and some bad things to like about this matchup for South Carolina. If you're South Carolina, Cam Smith is probably one of the few cornerbacks in the SEC that, from a talent standpoint, might be able to contend with some of the wideouts that Tennessee is going to trot out there on the field. Some of these guys in Cedric Tillman, Brew McCoy, and also, of course, Jalen Hyde, who I'm sure we'll talk about a little bit more in just a couple of moments. But you've also got Darius Rush, who's a real solid senior cornerback back there. And you got some other guys in Devonnie Reed, who was a graduate transfer, of course, out of Central Michigan. So you've got some experience and some talent in the starting lineup. The problem for South Carolina is the amount of injuries that they've had throughout this year. There have been a lot of guys in this secondary unit that have been banged up, that have had to leave different games at multiple points, and that's led to a lack of consistency in this rotation. And guess what? Tennessee's tempo looks to attack your rotation, force you to have to keep guys in the ball game, which means that you're not going to be able to substitute as often. Communication is going to be a lot more imperative. And the other thing, South Carolina is going to be starting two true freshman defensive backs as of this moment, that is, on Saturday night in Nick Emingbury and DQ Smith. And both of these guys have received a lot of praise from their respective teammates and their coaches this season for the play that they have, for how they have played up to this point. But if you're Tennessee with the kind of offense that you run, of course, this is going to be something that you're maybe going to want to try to take advantage of. You know, how quickly are these freshmen going to be able to adjust and adapt to an offense that they probably have never seen before like some of these other guys. So whoever wins this matchup on Saturday night, it could end up making or breaking this football game, honestly, for either football team. So South Carolina's defensive backs versus Tennessee's tempo, that is going to be a key matchup, in my opinion, to watch in this contest. Here's something South Carolina is going to have to watch out for because it got Nick Saban four times in a football game. It's It got Brian Kelly against LSU. I mean, it, it got Florida. It got... Um, uh, it got Eli Drinkwitz in Missouri last last week. I mean, it, it's the motion and what Tennessee does off motion. Motion, the eye candy, it's confusing a lot of these defenses. And what Alex Golish, the offensive coordinator, and Josh Heupel are able to do, they're able to scheme up off motion mismatches to where Jalen Hyatt's covered by a linebacker. I mean, it, cornerbacks and safeties can't cover Jalen Hyatt right now, much less a linebacker. Kentucky had a linebacker on him twice a couple weeks ago. Uh, last week against uh, Missouri, um, just beautiful play concepts. Uh, there was one play where you had a tackle over. You had Brew McCoy acting as a tackle. You were hiding Jalen Hyatt behind an offensive guard as like an H-back, and then you send a guy in motion, taking the corner away, 
and then you just run a wheel right out there. That type of stuff, I discipline. Tennessee's going to do a whole lot of stuff, and they're doing that in order to create those mismatches and those one-on-one situations. So for South Carolina in particular, against these wide receivers, and Cedric Tillman, I expect him to be back as well. They're going to have to stay disciplined. For Tennessee, you know, South Carolina is going to use uh, the intermediate passing game a lot. They got two uh, you know, really good tight ends, and uh, Jaheim Bell and Austin Stogner. They throw to the running backs a lot, at least they do on paper. And I think it's going to be key to limit that, especially with Jaheim Bell. Let me ask you a question here, Andrew. He does a little bit of everything, at least on paper. You know, in terms of running the football, how do they use him as a as a runner? Because he is a tight end. Well, Eric, I think the best way to put it is obviously they do simplify the running game down a little bit in terms of the kind of play calls that they put out there when Jaheim Bell is back there. Because as much as the coaches say that he is a natural running back, Jaheim Bell has been playing tight end for the majority of his career here at South Carolina. So I think you'll see a lot more of an inside run game in terms of maybe just more so halfback dives than anything that's going to involve maybe some zone blocking where the running back and those kind of plays, they got to make the decision of which kind of gap they're going to try to hit in order to try to gain some yardage. And for South Carolina, you know, this is actually another big matchup here because Marshawn Lloyd and Christian Bill Smith right now, their status is up in the air for this game against the Tennessee Volunteers. And if you're a South Carolina fan, of course, you're going to slump down in your seat or wherever you're sitting or standing at hearing that because Marshawn Lloyd means everything to the South Carolina football team. He is how this offense pretty much starts and ends. And you got Christian Bill Smith as well, who's a really solid veteran running back behind him, who's more so that power back that can go out there and get you those couple of tough bull yards in third and short situations when you need it. And if neither of these guys can go, there's no doubt you'll probably see a lot more Jaheim Bell on Saturday night at running back. So how does this affect South Carolina's run game? Well, I mentioned that there's going to be a lot higher frequency or volume of halfback dive type plays. You will not see as many power and counter runs, which normally involve a couple of pull blockers going from one side of the formation over to the other. South Carolina has used those kind of run concepts a lot this year, especially with tight end Nate Atkins, who he might not be the talent that Austin Stogner or Jaheim Bell are at that position, but he is a tenacious blocker. He is not afraid to get after defensive ends and linebackers in those kind of run plays. But if you're going to have Jaheim Bell back there, then South Carolina is going to automatically probably take most of those plays out of the playbook. And so for South Carolina, the offensive line, you've got to get a push this week. You can't do what you did last week against Florida and get maybe a half yard to a yard max each time you run any running plays inside the box. You're going to have to really win your one-on-ones. Throw out some more combo blocks to where you have two guys on one D line and have one guy work their way up to a linebacker. You're going to have to do that because you have got to keep Tennessee's offense off the field, which means you need to have this run game see some type of flow. If you do not get that, South Carolina, you're going to automatically make it harder on yourself in this game. So South Carolina's running game versus Tennessee's defensive front, especially based on the status of Marshawn Lloyd and Christian Bill Smith, that will be another key factor, another key matchup in terms of position groups or maybe schematic play calling in this football game. Yeah, I think one more, you know, obviously Tennessee keeping up with the intermediate passing game and keeping Jaheim Bell under wraps because he's, you know, probably the biggest weapon in terms of that. But and and of course, Antoine Wells coming over from James Madison's having a really nice season. I just think it, you can say this about every single week, and it's it's pretty simple. I get it, but uh, Spencer Rattler's made mistakes this year. Um, you know, good on good on Beamer for going out and getting a quarterback. I understand last year was such a trip with you know four different guys starting under center. You had uh, which I I lo- I forgot his name. I love the story of the of the grad transfer coming over and coaching, and then saying, "Oh, well, let me Uncle Rico this and go in there." I know he just played the year before. I get it. Um, but it, it was a struggle, and I understand sometimes se- seasons are like that. So getting a quarterback that's capable and has some talent, that's Spencer Rattler, of course. Um, might have been overhyped, obviously, coming off that 2020 season in Oklahoma. But he's made some mistakes this year. So Tennessee's an aggressive defense. Pressure him. Make him make quick decisions, and we'll see if he makes the wrong decision. And Tennessee's aggressive defense that leads the SEC with, I believe it's 19 takeaways, See if they can create some turnovers because of Spencer Rattler. That's also, Andrew, what I'll be looking for in this game. Yeah, if you're Marcus Satterfield, based on all of that, you need to call a lot more bootleg and rollout type play action passes where you're going to move the pocket horizontally. So, therefore, you can give Spencer Rattler a little bit more of a cushion when the offense is out there and they have passing plays they're trying to run. For Bet Online, uh, Eric alluded to this earlier. They have 
South Carolina as a 22 point underdog against the Tennessee Volunteers. That over under is set at 66 and a half points. If you're a volunteer, you might really want to take the over. If you're a Gamecock, you're going to hope that it's going to end up being the under in this case. And of course, Bet Online is your number one source for betting football and the start of the new basketball season, which started just this past week. You can find all the latest player developments, team matchups, news, and analysis on every game that you can find. They're your continued source for all of your sport wagering information with live betting and up-to-the-minute score updates for every sport out there. They're the fastest and easiest way to check out all of your favorite games and events, including MMA, boxing, and golf. So head on over to Bet Online on your personal computer or use your mobile device to learn more because Bet Online is where the game starts. It's Tennessee. It's at South Carolina, seven o'clock on ESPN. Coming up on Saturday, I'm Locked On Balls host Eric Kane. He is Andrew Lyon, Locked On Gamecocks host, and we're doing a Thursday Locked On crossover edition. All right. So I think kind of how this game is going to go, Andrew. Tennessee is a fast and aggressive football team. It's going to come out. It's probably going to, you know, score a couple early. But here's the thing. I mean, you know, especially with that tempo and just with being a good football team, sure, it's not it's not unexpected that Tennessee will come out and score quickly. It's it's how South Carolina responds to that because where Tennessee was so bad a season ago was in the second quarter. This year, Tennessee's been so good in the second quarter. So you might jump out to a, a quick touchdown or two touchdowns, but then Tennessee buries teams in the second quarter. And so how does South Carolina respond? Much like what Georgia did to Tennessee. Now, they scored once in the second quarter. Georgia kind of buried Tennessee in the first quarter. But um, Tennessee puts games away early. And so I I'm expecting a little bit of that same tune. Um, I do think there's a lot to play for for South Carolina. We're 5-2 and two at one point. Um, have two of the best teams, two of the top 10 teams in the country. You know, to finish off the regular season, it is senior day. Um, I can relate in terms of a lot. There's there's some good players that stuck through some bad times, and this is their time to to be honored. I mean, you know, there, there, there's a lot of players like that still on the roster for Tennessee right now who are six years. Um, so I get that. So I think that, you know, I don't envision this being an absolute butt whooping like, you know, Tennessee over Missouri. But I do see Tennessee coming out, scoring early, um, just because, quite frankly, it's a better football team this year. Um, and, and I think. Uh, with with, uh, with the quarterback play of Hendon Hooker and, and, and Jalen Hyde as well. It's just, I think it's going to be a little bit too much, especially for two of those true freshman defensive backs that you were mentioning. So I think Tennessee comes out early and often, um, hits South Carolina and puts it away. And I'll say the final score somewhere around, oh, 55 to 28, 55 to 28. I think Tennessee will win. And I know. Again, that is a convincing win, but hey, at least it's not, you know, 66 to 24 like it was last week. Right. Well, for South Carolina, obviously, there's no question. You got to have a lot go your way in this game. I mean, you're going to need to have both sides of the ball play a near perfect game. You're going to need to have probably some turnovers play a role in this contest, which with Hennon Hooker, you do not see that happen very often. You're going to need to have Beamer Ball play a role, which again, I know people are going to laugh at that, but South Carolina legitimately has made a lot of scoring drives. They have, they have propelled a lot of block punts, a lot of really good special teams play into some touchdowns this season. So South Carolina is going to need all of that to play a factor in this contest to make it competitive. The problem is you're facing another matchup nightmare with Tennessee. I talked about last week with Florida. Florida's run game is one of the best in the country, and South Carolina's rush defense subsequently is one of the worst in the SEC. This week, Tennessee, one of the best teams in the country still, I think, in terms of getting off to really hot starts and seemingly pulling away in the second quarter. What is South Carolina bad at? Getting off to good starts offensively. So the thing South Carolina, and Eric, you alluded to this, um, the thing South Carolina needs to do in this game, you cannot let this game get away from you early because if you do, the air in williams Bryce, williams Bryce can be a raucous crowd. It's one of the most underrated home environments in all of college football, bar none. But if the opponent gets out to an early lead, like say 14, 17, 21 points, with everything that's happened with this team recently, the fans' energy will be zilch. It will be gone. You'll risk having fans leaving the stadium at halftime because, quite frankly, they are fed up with a few certain aspects of how this season has played out for this team. So, South Carolina, I want to say that they're going to put up a fight. I want to say that Josh Vance is going to have over 100 receiving yards. Zach Vance is going to have three or four sacks. They deserve that with everything they have been through. 
but you cannot let emotions dictate your thought with this game. And so I do think this is going to be a blowout. I think that Tennessee is going to put some style points on the board at the end because, quite frankly, they need to. They have yeah. to do it to show the committee what they are doing on the field, to make the score look good. And I don't think that's going to be an offense to South Carolina, but you know, it's just what they have to do with what they're fighting for right now. What's South Carolina fighting for? Are you fighting for your pride? Are you fighting for a better bowl game than, say, Birmingham or Shreveport? What is it you're fighting for? They're going to have to figure that out. But I just don't think it's going to be enough. I have the final score being Tennessee 59, South Carolina 17. I think that Tennessee more than covers that 22-point spread. And I do think that it will be over the 66 and a half points that was set by our friends over at Bell Online. So again, South Carolina fans, I want to say this is going to be close. But from a matchup standpoint, this just is not going to bode well for the Gamecocks in my eyes. If I could recommend anything, I would say take that over. Because if if Tennessee's proven anything... I mean, it can it can go for a 50-burger at any point in time offensively, and boy, it can surely almost lose you a football game by letting people come back in with, you know, some late touchdowns, you know, like Florida and, and Pittsburgh and whatnot. So um, I do want to ask you one thing. I know, I know we're towards the end here, but talk a little bit about Beamer Ball. Um, special teams, big-time emphasis. I know you got on the board with special teams uh, a week ago. Last year, a trick play. I know this wasn't special teams, but Beamer tried a trick play, which would – in my opinion, was just a horrible, horrible decision uh, within the 10-yard line against Tennessee, and it backfired. South Carolina will need to steal possessions uh, to try to stay in this one. And so I think you can do that on special teams or down up some trickeration on offense. What have you seen so far from South Carolina, obviously, with last week included? Well, I think that South Carolina, in terms of trick plays, they're not going to be a team that's going to throw out, like, say, multiple in a game, but they're going to pick their spots. So let's say, you know, hypothetically speaking, if Tennessee goes up 17 to three to start the game, it's the second quarter. South Carolina just went three and out on offense, and they feel the momentum quickly slipping away. Coach Beamer's not going to be afraid to call a trick play out right then and there. Pete Lembo, he is not your prototypical special teams coordinator. There's a lot of special teams coordinators out there that have probably less than a dozen plays for each unit of the special teams uh, portion of the team. Pete Lembo's got stacks of plays that he dives into, and they study the film of their opponents each and every week, and they try to pick their spots based on where they're positioned on the field and the kind of look that the opposing team gives them. So I certainly see your point in where South Carolina could definitely try one or two trick plays, and they might need that in this game. And, of course, you know, South Carolina has, again, scored multiple touchdowns on, on block punts. They have scored a kickoff return for a touchdown. And you're going to, again, need a score like that in this contest. So I think you could see a little bit of both if things go well for South Carolina. But, again, you know, that's banking on the fact that Tennessee is going to have to punt more than a couple of times in this game. So that part might be negated to a certain degree. But, yes, in terms of trick plays um, – it's probably a good bet that you'll see one or two from South Carolina's end on Saturday night. And, and Tennessee's punt team has been so, so shaky this year. So ha protecting Pax and Brooks, Pax and Brooks, not shanking a punt, getting it off. It's going to be really critical in this game. Hey, awesome stuff, man. Andrew, really appreciate it. Locked on balls listeners. If you want some more coverage of South Carolina leading into Saturday's game, Hey, it's a night game. So we got plenty of time over the next couple of days. Uh, give Andrew a listen over at uh, Locked On Gamecocks. Listen to uh, his episodes from this week as well to learn about South Carolina. And, of course, you Gamecocks listeners, if you want to know more about the balls, head on over to uh, Locked On Balls. Thank you guys so much for making Locked On Balls and Locked On Gamecocks your first listen here today. For your next listen, I encourage you to check out Locked On Sports today. You can catch up on the biggest stories of the day in sports. But let's get instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. Locked on Sports Today. It's available on the Odyssey app, on YouTube, and wherever you get your podcast. Andrew, had fun, man. Appreciate it. Thank you for your time, Eric. He's Andrew Lina, Locked on Gamecocks. I'm Eric Kane, Locked on Vols. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll talk to you again tomorrow.